This is Sammy. For the way he makes his living, he's really too much of a thinker. I think he's attracted to Anna, but really, he doesn't seem to know what to do about it. This is Clyde. He doesn't do any real thinking at all. But he does know how to improvise. Sammy likes Clyde because, as a thief, having someone close who can get you out of sticky situations is a real asset. Clyde says he can get out of any jam because of his magnetic charm. But don't believe anything he says. He's a liar. Ah, Anna. Thought she had this caper under control. She got in over her head. She didn't see what was coming. So, how big? Big. How much exactly? I don't know. You mean she didn't tell you? She's not sure. Then how do you know it's big? It's more than a lot. Can you trust her? Sure. Is she hot? What do you mean? What do you think I mean? What does that have to do with anything? She's cute. Amanda Bynes cute or Abigail Breslin cute? Neither. Those two pretty much cover cute, don't they? She's... Disney cute. Disney cute? Like Hannah Montana cute? That's pretty much Amanda Bynes cute, isn't it? No. She's more like Thumper's girlfriend cute. Thumper had a girlfriend? I did not know that. Look, it doesn't matter. I'll get her to give you all the details when we get there. I'm sure it's more than we've ever taken before. So whose money is it? The government's. Huh. But this is only one little wrinkle for our trio of thieves. <laughs> At the campus cafe, Sammy introduces Anna to Clyde. This is Disney Q. I think you'll find Anna's plan very interesting. We're going to have a talk about this later. Anna lives with her aunt. And my Aunt Louise. The interesting part about this is... That they have a couple of boarders renting the upstairs portion of their house who used to be accountants for the federal government. You find that interesting? Anna here has reason to believe that they embezzled a substantial amount of money from the government before they quit. That is interesting. How much? A lot. How much is a lot? Enough to fill a pretty good sized suitcase with hundred dollar bills. How much would that be? More than enough. A million dollars? Maybe. Maybe more. Are these guys dangerous? They're accountants. They go to the Masonic Lodge every Friday night. How'd you find out about the money? Well, I did something I probably shouldn't have. Aunt Louise told me never to do this, but... Anna conveyed to Clyde that her aunt had a cold one night and asked Anna to get her a tissue. Not finding one downstairs, Anna went upstairs into Mr. Stoltz's room. Even though she had strict instructions from her aunt never to go upstairs, there she found a tissue box. On the dresser, she also found her aunt's expensive trinket bowl. Why would Mr. Stoltz take her aunt's trinket bowl, she thought. It's a family heirloom. Then she noticed what she believed was her aunt's suitcase in the closet. Anna went into the closet, got out the suitcase to check. When she opened it, she found that it was stuffed with $100 bills. Why would they steal your aunt's suitcase and fill it with $100 bills? I was confused by that myself. After discovering the suitcase full of money, Anna went downstairs, gave her aunt the tissue, and noticed her aunt's suitcase in the corner of the room. 
so it wasn't her suitcase after all. They stored the loot in their own suitcase, which, by coincidence, is identical to my aunt's. <laughs> loot. The money, naturally, made Anna curious, so she began to eavesdrop on Mr. Stoltz and Mr. Messer's conversations. They talked about the money they embezzled from the government. But that's not all I found out. During one of her clandestine operations, Anna also discovered that Mr. Stoltz was planning to stiff Mr. Messer. She overheard a telephone conversation where Mr. Stoltz told the person on the other end of the line that they would get all of the money because... And I quote, this Metzer guy is a born patsy. <laughs> patsy. <laughs> so Stoltz is planning on taking all the money for himself. I don't like this Stoltz guy already. And he generally likes everybody. Don't believe what Sammy just said. He's a liar. There's another little wrinkle. Anna also found out from another phone call she overheard that Mr. Messer knew what Mr. Stoltz was planning. So needless to say, Mr. Messer is suspicious of Mr. Stoltz. Well, aren't you the little busybody? The large amount of money in the suitcase, which Anna mistook for her aunt's, got Anna to thinking. What if I took my aunt's suitcase and switched it with the one in the closet? What if you did? I'd be in Paris rich and you don't think that once these two guys go and see an empty suitcase that they wouldn't suspect it was you or your aunt who took the money listen to this here's my plan Anna's plan was to divert the attention of the embezzling accountants for a short period of time if the switch was made on the night before Anna and her aunt left for Paris and they managed to be gone before the discovery was made because of their inherent distrust for each other, Mr. Stoltz would think that Mr. Messer switched the suitcases. And Mr. Messer would think that Mr. Stoltz switched the suitcases. Or, more than likely, they'll think you or your aunt switched the suitcases and made off to Paris with the money. It doesn't make any difference once we're gone. What are they going to do, report us? It's so flaky, it, it just, just might work. work. She just needs us to switch the suitcases. Why us? Why not do it yourself? It needs to be done the night before we leave for Paris. Mr. Stoltz and Mr. Messer go to the lodge meeting every Friday night, so they won't be in the room. I need to keep my aunt distracted downstairs while somebody else makes a switch. There's no way for you to get upstairs through the house without being discovered, and so you'll need to go through the window upstairs. It'll take both of us to get the phony suitcase up and through the window, and the other, the one with the money, out. You guys don't use guns, right? Only on each other. Okay, we don't use guns. I have a blank pistol I use as a diversion. Only if necessary. But you guys don't use guns on the job. Good, because there won't be any need for guns. And nothing will go wrong, but if something does go wrong, anything at all, whoever can make a run for it. We disavow any knowledge of each other. <laughs> Who keeps calling you? My alarm. I set it to go off every 20 minutes. It keeps me alert. Pathetic, isn't it? Don't believe it. They're both liars. I'm waiting with you guys later Friday night. We'll split the money three ways and part company. The next day, I'll be off to Paris, and you guys... You guys go wherever it is that you guys go to. Sounds like a plan. Listen to this music. Makes me want to dance. This ridiculously superfluous dance number will give me a chance to catch you up on important backstory. So listen carefully. It may help us avoid doing any excruciatingly slow-moving, relationship-centered scenes, which everybody says makes for a good film, but nobody really believes it. First, Anna and Sammy knew each other because they took a French class together at the local community college. 
A fact you have already learned and are probably confused about is that Anna and her aunt are scheduled to leave for Paris on Saturday morning to live with Anna's father, Louise's brother. Anna was taking the class so she would be able to speak the language fluently when she moved to Paris. Sammy took the class because he thought it would be a cool way to meet chicks. And it worked. He met Anna. In an attempt to impress Anna, which could have done him in, Sammy revealed to Anna what he did for her living. It worked. Anna seemed impressed. Now Clyde, while he was initially perturbed about Sammy's indiscretion in revealing their extracurricular activities to Anna, now feels that it will pay off. In all events, it will give him a chance to take the role he covets. Humphrey Bogart. Here's looking at you, kid. So I'll keep an eye out for you tomorrow night. I'll bring you to kids as soon as you get there. There's a street light. The perfect opportunity. So, you're off to Paris tomorrow night. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Shane. What is? Oh, is Sammy getting a crush on Anna? I guess I thought there was something between us. There was. Yeah, but it's just too bad. You don't begrudge my going to Paris. No. I guess it's just a clear case of the human dilemma. The if something can go wrong, it will go wrong dilemma? Or the... If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with, Dilemma. No, the human curse. We're all connected, yet we're all separate. Look at that. I never saw so many streets leading to one place in my life. Everywhere I turn, I fall over Joe Brody. And I've been doing a lot of turning. What kind of gun do you carry, Spade? None. I don't like them all that much. Of course, there are a few at the office. You don't happen to have one here? You sure about that? Go ahead. Turn the place upside down if you want. I won't squawk. Free Bogart. The Maltese Falcon. So you guys don't use guns? Good. Little ones we don't. <laughs> I'll have to open the car. I'll go get it. I guess this is goodbye. We well, still need to meet after to split up the money. Yeah, I know, but I might not get a chance to talk to you alone, so. I thought you weren't going to be using guns. It's not real anyway. I'll just hold on to this until after. Suit yourself. Tie this end to the case. I'll bring this end up there and pull it up. You don't have a gun, do you? Thought we'd been over this, sweetheart. Shouldn't you be in the house anyway? Don't worry, she fell asleep. Well, what about after? What? Where should we meet to split up the money? Oh, right. Um, the campus cafe. Uh, we'll meet up right after this. Okay. You know, if her aunt was asleep, she could have done this herself easy. How was she supposed to know her aunt would fall asleep? Tonight was the night this was going to happen. What do you care anyway? After tonight, you're going to be a rich man. Yeah. All right, here we go. You 
know it's sad, isn't it? What is? What you said, what about after? Hurry up. Let's get this over with. I guess that's it. Yeah. But there's still some unfinished business. The job done, the boys probably should have just left. But, feeling flush in the moment, they couldn't resist playing out a scene from... The Big Sleep. What's this hold you got on Eddie Mars? Says they turned the town upside down. Cable man? Well, I think you'll find your cable functioning quite efficiently now, so I'll just be going. Stay where you are! I'm not giving you my gun. Down. What the hell are you thinking? Stay right there. Anna, think about this for a minute. This will work. In fact, this will work better than an original plan. We go, then you call the police and report a break in. When Stoltz and Messer get back, the suitcases will already be switched and they'll think it was somebody else who stole them. You and your aunt are in a better situation than you were with the original plan. You know, it might even be better to get rid of the decoy. I see what you mean. Then it would just be a straight robbery. Stay right there. Stay right here and do what? No one was supposed to get hurt. You could have killed her. She came at us with a gun. What were we supposed to- Listen, we need to move fast. Give me the gun. Hold it right there. Mr. Stoltz, I presume. What are you doing in here? They broke in, Mr. Stoltz. I caught them. Keep your gun on them, Mr. Messer. Why would you gentlemen want to break into this house? Nobody here has anything worth stealing. Well, that's an error in judgment on our part, then. Nothing worth stealing, then there's no point in us staying. So, with your permission... Stay right where you are. Are you okay, Anna? What happened? They tied up Aunt Louise and put her in the closet. In that closet?
Mr. Messer went to the closet and found Louise bound and gagged. But there was another wrinkle. Mr. Messer called Mr. Stoltz over to the closet. Feeling the need to be discreet, Mr. Messer conveyed the news to Mr. Stoltz that Anna's Aunt Louise was no longer among the living. Clyde's blow to her head did more than quiet her. There was a moment of moral uncertainty as the three young criminals were left with a small window of opportunity for escape. But Anna was too worried about her aunt to allow any further developments. And then something occurred that made the next few minutes rational, even though they won't make sense to you right now. Put down the guns, Anna. How is she? She'll be all right. Now, give me the guns. But what about the... Mr. Messer was an accountant. He wasn't versed in the sensitive trigger that belonged to the gun he held. I know you are a little disoriented right now, Mr. Messer, but if you can take a longer view, I think you can come to realize that this works out better for us. Now we get to keep all the swag. Swag. It's slang for property stolen by organized crime. Mr. Stoltz was both ambitious and crafty in his following assessment. I'll take this out of here. You call the police and report the break-in. I will inform our associates of the robbery and give them a description of the men who stole the swag. I would advise you not to give the police an accurate description. We would not want the police to find them before our associates do. Meet me at the warehouse when you've got this taken care of. We will split the money there. As you can imagine, Mr. Stoltz departed with no intention of going to the warehouse. He left Mr. Messer holding the bag. As it turned out, literally. So, Mr. Stoltz drove away, thinking that he had the swag. And the boy drove away thinking that they had the swag, when, in actuality, we had the swag. think it's safe? They didn't really kill her, did they? Let's just say I had to improvise. Once I learned that Stoltz was planning on stiffing me out of my share of the take, 
I knew that my only chance was to find a way to get the entire swag away from him, leaving him holding the empty bag. But I had to find a way to make him think that he stiffed me, and then he ended up getting stiffed by someone else. So I decided to get in touch with Louise. Now, she's been in the confidence game for years and was looking for a way to get a big enough take to move her operation to Paris, along with her young protege, Anna. Stoltz gave me the task of finding a place in a little out-of-the-way town so we could lay low until we were sure that the swag was clean enough to turn over to the mob. Louise rented this old house and posed as a lonely woman looking for boarders. So Stoltz and I sublet the upstairs. Luckily, Anna was taking a French class at Summer Falls Community College, along with a thief she had been casing for future reference. When she discovered that he had an accomplice, she knew that they could be played for our purposes. So Anna convinced them to help her with the old switcheroo, which she had to get her pigeons to think that they were stealing money from a couple of harmless accountants. Easy enough. There was, naturally, a third suitcase filled with newspaper that the ladies switched with the money before the boys got there. Anna would get the boys into the room, and they would switch the suitcase filled with newspaper with a suitcase filled with newspaper. Then, our thieves would get one of the decoys out of the picture. At just the right moment, Louise would enter with a gun and discover the thieves in the middle of their malfeasance and hold them there until we showed up. I was carrying a conveniently stowed blank pistol. Being a meek accountant, I would panic and shoot both Louise and Anna. Next, I would convince Stoltz that we should let the boys get away and take the fall for the murders and the missing swag. <laughs> Neat. Except for the little wrinkle in the plan. We did not plan on Clyde ditching into the closet just before Louise entered with the gun. That called for a little improvisation. After the boys tied up Louise and stuffed her in the closet, Stoltz and I entered. Anna quickly revealed the change in plans. In a nifty little piece of improvisation, I told Stoltz that Louise was dead. That left only Anna to get out of the way. For as screwed up as things got, they resolved themselves swimmingly. <laughs> After I shot Anna, the boys panicked and flew out of the window, saving me the work of convincing Stoltz to let them go. Hell, I didn't even need to lay it out for Stoltz. Even with the distracting aftermath, he put it all together without me having to say a word. So you see, Louise didn't have a cold and there was no tissue. There weren't two identical suitcases, there were three. I was not a meek accountant. Sammy isn't much of a thinker at all, and Clyde can't improvise. And I know I told you that Anna was in over her head and didn't see what was coming, but you shouldn't have listened to me. I'm a liar.